Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. My name is Ella Varis, and welcome back to Strategical Analysis for Total War Warhammer. Today, ooh yeah, leading the Beastmen hordes, take on myself leading the forces of the Wood Elves. So let's go into the comps and layout real quick here. I got five units of Eternal Guard with shields and a Branch Wraith with only Earth Blood. I've got my Glady on a Forest Dragon. See, off on my right flank, I've got two units of War Dancers with Azrai Spears, flanking a unit of Wild Riders with shields. You can see I've got five units of Deepwood Scouts. Now, Deepwood Scouts have Stock, or Master Ambusher, essentially, which allows them to essentially move hidden in any terrain until they get really close to the enemy. And they also have... Um, they can also fire whilst hidden. So you can see with this strategy, what I'm trying to do is say, here's my whole army, or here's my army. I might have some hidden archers behind here, but essentially I want to lead the beastmen to this main army and take an engagement. Now what I'm going to be trying to do is kite back with this army, lead them further on, and what I can do is come in from the flank with my Deepwood Scouts, my legions of Deepwood Scouts, which can then pour into the gore herd and such. Now because these would... These would be very exposed and very in the open. I have these units here to act as my cav force and the protection for the cav, where in reality, what they are here for is to protect my Deepwood Scouts as soon as I let the first volley fly. Now onto the Beastman comps. He, or the Beastman comp, I should say, not plural. He's got two units of Chaos Warhounds all the way on the right side of the map. And then on the left side, you can see he's got two units of Centigors, one of them with throwing axes. Now, when I was first looking i did not actually see these units so they actually completely take me by surprise which is a bit of an issue and in their main force here you can see they've got a whole bunch of ungor spearmen herd they've got a bunch of gore herd and then two best of gore herds they've got a unit of minotaurs a gore bull malagor the dark omen so you can see they've got a more standard setup here you know kind of all together with their cab on either flank i'd say it's a little bit of a mistake to put your cab that far apart one on each side of the map because unless i spawn in the very middle it's going to take one of those cav units a year and a half to get to my force. So now, let's go into play. So essentially, you can see here, I'm moving my Deepwood Scouts forward. I want to get to a position on, like, kind of like the side of their army, like, say, here, so that as they move towards me, then I can fire in and absolutely decimate them, and I've got my units here to cover for them. You can see the lines start moving forward, but I realize, okay, what I want to be doing is buying as much time as possible for my Deepwood Scouts, so I move my lines back a bit and force him to come to me, hopefully. So he still doesn't know these Deepwood Scouts are here. I'm going to start lining them up like this, and then I've got my Cav and Spearman units here waiting to support. Now the first target here is going to be the Gore Herd. They're definitely quite powerful. I could do some good work in melee, so I need to get ready and opening up my first volley. You can see what's going to happen soon. Just trying to line them up here. And now the rest of their troops pour forward. And you will see an Ungor Spearman herd is about to discover one of my units of Deepwood Scouts right there revealed. And I say, okay, he's been revealed. All right, spring the trap. You're going to see a massive, massive volley pour into these Gore, this unit of Gore herd. And they're going to take a huge amount of damage. You can see already down to below half health takes a huge chunk of morale damage from that. Definitely a very good volley to start the match off on. And now I need to get my Cav and my um, War Dancers in position to defend. And you can see now pouring shots into the flank of these Ungor Spearmen Herd, dropping about 40 models there. And now I notice there are troops in the back. So now I need to reroute my soldiers. My Wild Riders get caught going sideways, and they end up taking a nasty charge. And now their Centigors make it through to my Deepwood Scouts. So I need to pour the rest of my Deepwood Scouts out this way. You can see over on this flank, I have to be careful. I almost got caught there, and I still need to keep pulling out. Try and buy a little bit more time. You can see I net these Minotaurs over here so that they can't charge into my Deepwood Scouts. You can see now on the map, you can see these Chaos Warhounds taking a year and a half to get over, as I said, so it's taking them way too long. If they were closer, they would have been able to make it here sooner and do more work and maybe force me to not, um, force me to not keep kiting because they'd have cav pressure here, but they don't. So now, you can see unit of Azrai Spear War Dancer surrounding these Centigors and forcing them into a wavering state. Same with these Centigors with throwing axes. And these Ungor Spearmen Herd have also taken a ton of damage. These Minotaurs are still netted by the prey of Anathrema. And now I'm going to be pouring some shots into these Ungor Spearmen Herd trying to force them away. I don't want them on my archers because they'll just tie them down and my archers will take unnecessary damage. 
you're going to see here, they're a little bit spread up, spread out here. So I'm going to take this opportunity and I'm going to issue a mass attack order. And my, all my troops are going to turn right around and just slam into the front of this Beastman army. You can see here comes the dragon and I do put down the Earthblood. Earthblood is very good early on in the engagement when no models have dropped because that's when the healing is most um, most beneficial because it's not like Invocation of Nehek. It doesn't raise units from the dead. What it does is it heals unit models, and if my unit model's already dead, then I'm not getting much out of the healing. You can see I used a Control g group lock and then charged forward, but these spearmen ended up going a mile and a half around, so I end up sending them into the side of this Ungor Spearman herd. Now you can see the Minotaurs have been unnetted, and now they are going to start moving forward. You can see I've managed to get my Deepwood Scouts away and routing this Ungor Spearman herd, and they're going to be pouring a volley into the flank of these retreating Centigors of Throwing Axes. Not really what I want to be wasting my volleys on at this point, as the Minotaurs are going to be the highest value target still on the field. So my Branch Wraith kind of sitting here just healing stuff up with his aura of increased attack. See, my Spearmen are still sitting around here, moving away, and I'm going to be rerouting them to hopefully get a charge into the flank here. You see my Dragon running amok, another volley, Trying to take out these Minotaurs, but not close enough yet. You can see I'm charging my Wild Riders forward, but I say, okay, it's not really the engagement they want to take. And now the Azra Spear Ward answers exchange blows with the Bestigor Horde as both units charge into each other. And I unleash a terrible volley, slamming into the flank of my own units. And now the Chaos Warhounds have finally arrived, and I try and charge my Ward answers with Azra Spears to intercept. But I made a grave mistake. Since that I did not issue an attack order, I issued a move order. So this allows this unit of Wavering Chaos Warhounds, they're not routing, just Wavering, to get around the flank and now charge into my Deep Wood Scouts. Not what I want, but I do issue an attack order shortly thereafter and take out this unit of Chaos Warhounds that's going to be taking a lot of damage very soon. But thankfully, I do manage to route these Chaos Warhounds very, very quickly. Dragon taking a lot of damage, and now she's going to come and help these war dancers with Azurai Spears. We're not having a good time after more volleys pour in, and another huge mistake by me firing at this horde of best gore herd as soon as my dragon lands, who ends up taking a huge amount of damage. But now you can see they have a huge horde of beastmen right here. Gore herd, Ungor spearmen. Going to be taking a lot of damage from all of these volleys. You can see the volleys pouring into the flank here, taking a ton of damage. Apologize for the lag here. All right, so getting back into this, we can see they do have returning Centigors that are pouring into the flank of my Deepwood Scouts. You can see Bestigore Herd coming forward towards my Dragon. Not really the target for them, as the Dragon is probably going to terrify them as they're on very low health. And I do manage to route the unit of Chaos Warhounds. You can see more volleys pouring out of my Deepwood Scouts, and now my dragon is trying to chase their Centigors, who a few of them make it through, but they're so weak at this point, it's not that much of, that not much damage is really pouring into them. But now, a volley about to pour into the faces of these Minotaurs, who are going to take a huge amount of damage. Okay, maybe not a huge amount of damage, but a decent amount of damage. Start whittling them down. Minotaurs right now are one of the most threatening units on the field for me as they will absolutely tear my Deepwood Scouts to shreds and my infantry as well. Not sure if it would be wise, not sure if it's the wisest option to charge the Minotaurs right into the face of four archer units. That's definitely not going to end well. I feel like they would be better served smashing the rest of my infantry. As, as you can see, most of my infantry is already getting smashed. A Gorbel running amok in the back lines. Here my branch rate taking a lot of damage. So now, pouring more shots into these Minotaurs who are bowling over my poor war dancers with Azurai Spears. And now, my cavalry hammering into the flank of these Bestigore Herd and Minotaurs, tying them up and putting up enough damage such that they're wavering and ready to rout. War dancers with Azurai Spears almost at full health charging in, going to make them rout now. Now they have some troops returning to the fight and some volleys pouring in to make sure they don't return for long. You can see, you got to keep running my Glade Lord around, keep terrifying things. Now the next target is going to be this horde here, and hopefully I'm going to be able to terrify them out of the field. My dragon pouring in here. More volleys coming out from my Deepwood Scouts. You can see I pull my dragon out before she gets destroyed by my own volleys. I learned my lesson this time. 
So you get in the cab units, and as I spears around and retreating my branch wraith, making sure he doesn't take too much damage because he still has much needed healing. I end up netting this unit of centigors with throwing axes so that they can't charge into my deepwood scouts. But here comes an enemy charge of Chaos Warhounds. Now, not the most devastating charge because he made a mistake of, for some reason, having them in this really long line. What he should have them is kind of spread out like this so that they can, you know, the full brunt of the charge will pour in. But now it's only going to be a few of the units that are actually getting in. The rest are going to kind of just pile up behind their own kin. So, not necessarily the best way to be charging your cab. You can see the Saigor and Branch Wraith going to town on each other, and now I've got a ton of volleys pouring in from my Deepwood Scouts. So now let's take a look at the tactical overview. You can see I managed to route these Centigors with throwing axes. They're not going to be coming back. Still have the Chaos Warhounds to deal with, and these Bestigor herd are dangerously close to my archers who have no support. Now he's going to start moving some Gore Herd and Ungore Spearman Herd towards my archers. So now what I'm doing is moving my Glade Lord over to intercept. I'm going to hopefully terrify them and kill a bunch of models such that um, they rout quickly. So you can see they're getting a little bit divided, their main horde here. But nevertheless, uh, it's definitely not in my favor, like really not in my favor. About 35% uh, chance left for me to win, possibly a little bit less. See, I'm pulling my war dancers with Azurai Spears out this way to hopefully get some more cover to my archers. Now, I didn't, I don't think I really wanted my Branch Wraith fighting that Saigra. I don't know why he was. And now he's turning tail and running. Not what I want here. And a lot of my Eternal Guard now with shields are returning, but I don't notice them for a while. You can see my Wild Riders are going to be charging into this unit of Gore Herd. You know, just take these guys out of the fight. There's not a whole lot of things I need them chasing right now. You know, definitely don't want them charging into this huge horde here. So I'm just going to take off some of the units on the outskirts that have come back from routing and force them into a full retreat. See, a little bit dangerous here. I've got a unit of Bestigore Herd charging towards my Deepwood Scouts, and I've still got these Chaos Warhounds on my butt. So, starting to open up on these Bestigore, on these this one unit of Bestigore Herd. But I'm going to need to retreat these units very quickly or this could be very bad. Unfortunately, I don't retreat them fast enough and they're going to get poured into by the best core hurt. Now, I've got some of my other Deepwood Scouts. You can see this unit here firing the best core herd, And this unit here firing at the Chaos Warhounds and forcing them to rout. Now you can see eight units, eight individuals of Centigors getting ready to charge into my archers here. Now because it's eight, they're not actually going to do that much damage, which is good. Now I'm on a full retreat. Got to regroup here. You can see there's the Gore Bull. He's quite fast and he's going to be killing a lot of these war dancers with Azrai Spears. And now I charge my Force Dragon in. Need to get that terrified. Need to get the fear and terror up so I can terrify these units and force them to rout. And also the biggest thing here is if my Glade Lord is distracting this horde of units, she can't get... Um, they can't get on my Deepwood Scouts. But now they're starting to bring a lot of soldiers over. So now I pull the Glade Lord out. You can see I charge into the flank of the score bull with my wild riders to prevent them from to prevent him from getting on my deepwood scouts. A lot of my um, eternal guard with shields have returned from routing, and now I charge into these minotaurs. They're not going to have a good day. The rolling animation of the minotaurs absolutely decimating them. We'll see who can win that battle. The score bull actually takes a lot of damage there, and with the addition of these war dancers with Azurai spears, they're going to be finished off. I net the highest health unit of this best gore herd. Keep them off my archers and let my archers kite a little bit more. Now my Glade Lord terrifies some more units of Bestigore Herd, and now I need my Glade Lord in here to finish off this little horde. The dragon will absolutely tear them apart. You can see she's already got 91 kills and should hopefully get some more. Now I've got a good setup here. I've got archers on all sides firing in. I've got my Glade Lord pouring down onto this unit of Gore Herd, instantly routing them because of how much damage they've taken and the terror and the terror caused by the dragon. Deepwood Scouts running out of ammo, and now they're going to be charging into the fray against Malagor. You can see my dragon now charging into this unit of Bestigor Herd. Not the engagement the Bestigors want to take, as the dragon is going to tear them to shreds, and they're going to be running very soon. See a lot of penalties on their morale there. See Deepwood Scouts still pouring in some shots. Now Malagor casting a Devolve on my clump here, not going to do too, too much damage. And now an Arrow of Kronos pours in and takes a good chunk out of Malagor there. And you can see Bounce Bar is actually way back in my favor now. Let's see Deepwood Scouts 
coming back. Don't have much ammo left, but they're going to pour some shots into these Ungor Spearmen herd nonetheless and keep them from getting back into the fight. And my Glade Lord running amok in the Beastmen backline. You can see a mass route here as Malagor's taken too much damage, surrounded by Elven soldiers and the rest of their units terrified by the Glade Lord. And as we look over a battlefield littered with corpses, the Wood Elves take the day in a Pyrrhic victory. And here we are at the final battle screen. You can see Glade Lord definitely carrying the day here. The Glady, I should say, carrying the day with a lot of kills. Definitely a lot of useful nets. Glade Lord, honestly, the best Wood Elf General. Always take the Glade Lord female variant, of course. Um, Wild Riders with shields not doing too bad. Deepwood Scouts getting quite a few kills between them. Remember, they're doing a lot of damage, not necessarily the kills. They bring a unit to below half, but that doesn't mean that all those that half of the units dropped, or half of the individuals in the unit dropped, just means that they took down half of the total unit pool's health. Still very good. Eternal Guard managed to hold the line long enough for my archers to, or my deep wood scouts, to get a lot of shots off. Branch Wraith, definitely healing was very useful. You can see Malagor, the Dark Omen, Gorbul with some good kills, Ungor Spearman Herd not doing too well. Bestigor Herd's actually doing quite well here. Um, three units of Bestigore Herds and two units of Gore Herd. Centigore is not too hot. Minotaur is not too hot. They got shot to pieces by the Deepwood Scouts. So, I hope you all enjoyed that battle. Very fun to play. A very fun to win. A very interesting strategy. I did not make this strategy up myself. I saw someone else use it, and I was inspired to try it out. And it ended up working pretty well, and it was really cool to see it worked out. So, I would like to thank you all for watching have a great rest of your day don't forget to like if you liked it and dislike if you disliked it and leave a comment you know um you're feel free to send me your replays at lavarsloa at gmail.com and i can show some on this channel and leave me any feedback you have my videos in the description below any feedback is appreciated to you know help improve the quality of my videos so yeah i'd like to thank you all for watching have a great rest of your day. Cheers, guys.